Hi, this is Rabbi Sandy Zisser. Welcome back to Jews and the History of Messianism. This is Unit 6, Menachem Mendel Schneerson. Today, we are looking at Menachem Mendel Schneerson, who was the Lubavitcher Rebbe, who died in 1994. So before looking at Schneerson's life as the leader of the Lubavitch movement, and why people thought he was the Mashiach, let's take a step back. And I'd like to look at a text from the Khatam Sofer. He said that in every generation, there is one righteous Tzaddik who merits to be the Mashiach. And when the time comes, God will reveal God's self to him and send him. According to another famous person, Chaim Medini, not only is there such a figure in every generation, he says, adding to what the Khatam Sofer said, but this figure was sometimes explicitly identified as such, he says. They assumed who the Mashiach may be, he continues, and for instance, he used Yehuda Hanasi as an example, in his generation, they said and knew that it was he who was worthy. What you're seeing is that there are famous commentaries throughout generations believing in this idea of the Mashiach and why they're supposed to be. So we have this concept in Hasidic Judaism. They are really focused very much on the Mashiach and future redemption. According to the uh, Baal Shem Tov, who was Rabbi Israel ben Eliezer, known as the Baal Shem Tov or the Besht, which is the acronym. Uh, he was a Jewish mystic and healer from Poland who was the founder of Hasidic Judaism. And the Baal Shem Tov, that name that was given to him that he took, is master of the good name. And as the story goes, he had actually encountered the Mashiach. And he had asked the Mashiach, when will you come to the world? And the Mashiach answered, when your teachings of Hasidism will spread forth. And many Hasidic Jews believe that there's a need to spread their message. And the more they spread their message, the sooner the Mashiach will come. And throughout Hasidic history, there have been numerous cases of Rebbe's that have been identified by their followers as worthy of being the Mashiach. And Menachem Mendel Schneerson is one of those people. So when you're looking at Hasidic Judaism or Chabad Hasidism has a long history of hoping that their Rebbe is actually the Mashiach. Uh, Schneerson himself spoke of his father-in-law, Yosef Yitzchak Schneerson, as the Mashiach of his generation. Uh, and also Chabad Rebbe's often speak with a great passion about the coming of the Mashiach and the coming of the Messianic era, about how it's relevant, how it's imminent. So in a speech that Joseph Bar Soloveitchik gave in 1942, he praised the efforts of Chabad Lubavitch who were trying to raise awareness of the coming of the Mashiach. And Soloveitchik said, Soloveitchik, by the way, was the uh, major American Orthodox rabbi. He was a Talmudist, he was a Jewish philosopher. Uh, and he said that the Lubavitch, the Lubavitch Rebbe speaks and publicizes about the Mashiach. So after Yosef Schneerson dies in 1950, his son-in-law, Menachem Mendel Schneerson, becomes the seventh Rebbe. Uh, and he was a passionate believer in the coming of the Mashiach. Uh, in fact, he had once written a letter to Israeli's president, Yitzhak ben Zvi, that from the time, quote, from the time that I was a child attending Cheder, and even before, the vision of the future redemption began to take form in my imagination. The redemption of the Jewish people from their final exile to redemption of such magnitude and grandeur through which the purpose 
of the suffering, the harsh decrees, and the annihilation of exile will be understood, end quote. Um, he encouraged people to focus on the world to come. He encouraged people to focus on the Mashiach very much. And he actually preaches and teaches it any chance he can get. And he would finish every public talk or teaching that he did with a prayer for the coming of the Mashiach. And as early as in the 1970s, he sought to raise awareness of this messianic age by encouraging people to learn and become knowledgeable of the laws of the temple. And laws that only would actually apply to the Mashiach when the Mashiach actually comes. And he, uh, he, he, his passion about the need for a Mashiach became more and more well known. So under Rabbi Schneerson's leadership, Chabad focused on the importance of each Jew to observe rituals and obligations and the commandments, which would hopefully hasten on the coming of the Mashiach. The Chabad slogan, Mashiach now, was a main tenant of their movement under Schneerson. And the movement established and maintained community service, you know, welfare services, educational and religious services, programs in over a hundred countries throughout the world. And Chabad does this in ways that they could spread their knowledge. So uh, based on what Schneerson had said, that it would bring the coming of the Mashiach. And in fact, millions and millions of followers have been attracted to Chabad over the years because of this outreach. Now, there was some controversy in this that we, didn't, we don't actually know 100% if Menachem Mendel Schneerson expressively asserted that he was the Mashiach. Um, it's clear that he spoke and acted in the manner that, that led people to believe that. Right, he, uh, but he actually is acting like what the Rebbe is supposed to act like, which is very much so similar to what people believe that the Mashiach should act like. So he would give his followers directions on personal issues, on uh, religious issues. He'd give them uh, advice on healthcare issues, investments family and personal relationships. Um, he, his advice dealt with ritual requirements, uh, like correcting your, your mezuzah if something bad is going on in your house. And he also was the center of many miraculous tales that may or may not have happened, but the lore was bigger than the man. Um, now, what's interesting and what makes Schneerson different for his followers than so many other of the uh, Lubavitcher Rebbe's that came before him, the other six that came before him, was that um, the founder, Schneer Zalman, predicted that the Messianic era would be the Shabbat of the world, right? And he believed that it would begin in the seventh millennium. And because the year 6001 in the Hebrew calendar, which begins the seventh millennium, falls on 2241. Schneerson calculated that in our time, right, in the 1990s, you would start feeling the effects of the coming of the Mashiach and the coming of the Messianic era. He actually believed and publicly spoke about the Persian Gulf War, which went from 1990 to 1991 as the start of a worldwide unrest, right? And that it would be the pre, pre that it would be the, the lead up, the beginning of the lead up to the Mashiach's arrival. And his followers believed him. Another interesting thing is that Menachem Mendel Schneerson did not have any heirs. He did not have any sons, no descendants. So basically, there would be a end of the Lubavitcher Rebbe line. And what he would say that it was not actually a problem that I have no descendants because 
after me there will be no more need for a Lubavitch Rebbe. Based on the word of Schneerson about this, there's a faction of the Chabad movement that certainly without a doubt believed that he was revealing himself as the Mashiach. Because after all, there's been seven generations of Lubavitch Rebbe. And Schneerson comes out saying, I have no descendant, it's no problem, because there will be no need for uh, Rebbe's after I am gone. So March 2nd of 1992, while praying at the Ohel, the site where his father-in-law was buried, Schneerson suffers a massive stroke. And that evening, he was being treated for his stroke. Uh, millions of Chabad Hasidim from around the world gather and pray for him. And during this period of illness, he's in, he has an inability to communicate with the, his followers. And in the, by the fall of 1992, the special balcony is built on the upper level of the synagogue at 770 Eastern Parkway, which is the worldwide headquarters for Chabad Lubavitch in Brooklyn in Crown Heights section of Brooklyn. And that special balcony allowed, overlooked the main sanctuary, and it allowed Schneerson to participate in daily prayers. During the next two years, Schneerson's followers gather and publish collections of his speeches to try to pick up where he left off. Obviously, he cannot travel and communicate and spread the word of the Messiah coming. But their idea was to spread the word through these publications that the coming of the Mashiach was imminent and that the hope that Schneerson would be the Messiah. But by late 1992, there was a movement within the followers of Schneerson to formally crown Schneerson as the Mashiach. And the Rebbe, who had been paralyzed and speechless since the previous year, 1991, in March, would join the daily prayers from a special balcony that was built for him. And they planned that on January 30th of 1993, after the evening prayers, he would be crowned as the Mashiach. Interestingly enough, when the Rebbe got word of the planned event, he communicated to his secretaries that he would only attend for the usual evening service, and he would refuse that ceremony, which is very interesting. So, he's, so that's sort of evidence to show that he did not think that he was actually the Mashiach. Um, so he doesn't actually attend that. He goes to the evening services on that day and, leaves and is wheeled out. So on the 3rd of Tammuz in 1994, more than two years after he suffered the stroke that took away his ability to speak, Menachem Mendel Schneerson died. And his death left Chabad, the Chabad community and much of the Jewish world in mourning. Because he, was, he did have a far further reach than just the Chabad community. And from all of the world, all, and from all over the world, people flew in to New York to, to participate in a funeral. Uh, the New York Times actually placed six articles about the Rebbe in the paper that week. And there were many hours of, of broadcast time in, on television during news programs uh, that were dedicated to Schneerson's death. So how does this affect the movement? Well, there was a faction of followers who believed that he was still the Messiah and that it's clear that some actually accept his death on the grounds that he was actually the Messiah for that generation, but not the Messiah for the entire world to bring about the Messianic era. Uh, other followers denied the fact that he actually had died and or, and or insisted that he would return as soon as the people fulfilled the conditions of the Messianic era. Meaning to go back to that original story that only when the people were worthy would the Mashiach come, right? To go back to the concept of the Chatam Sofer, who said in every generation there's a righteous, righteous man, a tzaddik, who merits to be the Messiah. 
And the only way that we could have that happen is that if we are worthy of it. So those followers believe that he hadn't died or that he had, but he would still return once they were worthy enough. So what would happen is that they idolize him in many ways. They make pil pilgrimages to his grave. They make pilgrimages to 770 in Brooklyn. They make, they uh, venerated his picture. They celebrated him with prayers. They seek advice and follow his advice for current life decisions based on past decisions that he created and made. And they see him still as the guiding voice of their lives. So where does this leave us? So there were many Torah scholars that believed that it was very possible that Menachem Mendel Schneerson had the potential to be the Mashiach of his generation. And there was even actually a movement that stated that Schneerson not only had the potential of being the Mashiach, but that he actually was. Interestingly enough, in between the years of 1998 and 2004, a rabbinic ruling supporting the messianic claim that Menachem Mendel Schneerson was the Mashiach was signed by over 100 rabbis. And in the year 2000, the chief rabbinate in Israel released a statement saying that Schneerson would be worthy of being the Mashiach. So what does that show for us? So with the onset of the 21st century, Jewish messianism continues to be a major belief. The concept that Menachem Mendel Schneerson could have been our generation's Mashiach held millions of people to that belief. Because after all, he was educated actually in a very prestigious secular university. He built up the Chabad Lubavitch movement, gave advice on personal matters and financial matters, modern medical matters. Um, he gained a dedicated following in America during a period of time where Jews were doing well. Right? There was prosperity. So is Menachem Mendel Schneerson any different than any of the other false prophets that we had seen. The one major difference for Schneerson was that he never actually came out publicly, declared to be the Mashiach, and declared the Messianic era to be upon us. He didn't try to trick or to rob or to steal from anyone. He was the leader of his community. His followers believed at least some of them believed that he actually was the Mashiach. And they believed it because of his acts and his deeds, his teachings, his behavior. If you ever met Menachem Mendel Schneerson or was, had the ability to hear one of his talks, you would see that he was a very highly educated, highly spiritual, personable, reflective person who in fact touched millions of lives. Did that make him the Mashiach? No. Did that make him a Sadiq, a righteous person in his generation? Yes. Did he believe that he was going to herald in a world to come and to bring all the Jews to Israel and to, to make things happen that, that the prophets talked about? No, probably not because of all of the work that he did, the one thing that he was, was extremely humble in, what he, in, in his belief. And that separated him out from the other false prophets. So him being a false prophet was really based on what his followers wanted to believe he was. And in fact, our time through the 1990s, and even to today, when his followers still believe, some of his followers still believe that he is the Mashiach or was the Mashiach and they're waiting for his return. It's because we always are seeking for something better. We're always seeking for a better.
better life, a better, you know, something in the world to make the world a better place. And this coming of the Mashiach would probably be the main goal. I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for participating.